Honey. Hello. Today I would like to share insights with you on weaving ways of knowing for the benefit of all. And to start us off, I want us to imagine that we're walking on a forest path through a large, vast, and beautiful mixed wood forest. A forest with maples, spruces, pines, oaks, many trees and shrubs of different kinds, each swaying in a gentle breeze. You begin to hear bird songs as you walk along this trail. And perhaps you see large black crows circling overhead. There are insects of many different species fluttering by, crawling on the ground alongside perhaps squirrels playing. Each of these species has a unique contribution, all valuable, all belong. And as you soak this in, imagine how this makes you feel, being in an environment like this, perhaps calm, soothed, happy, well. Now, imagine as you continue on your walk on this path, you are led to a pine tree plantation. Trees planted for humans for the benefit of one day harvesting for the wood they produce. Tall towering trees planted about equal distance apart with a uniform canopy. And as you walk on, you notice less sounds. It's quiet, it's darker, almost eerie. The further you walk into the plantation, less light seems to penetrate. You realize that this man-made forest does not support the life that the mixed wood forest did. Walking through a pine tree plantation was in a sense, the way I felt when I was embarking on a journey through university. I was a student of the natural sciences, a biology student. And I personally am an indigenous, and Anishinaabe on my mother's side and mixed European descent on my father's side. And I guess you could say I sort of had a foot in two worlds. Sometimes I would view things through an indigenous lens and other times through a Western lens, but multiple lenses was not what I was exposed to in school. Historically, following colonization of this land, also known as North America, Eurocentric education systems were founded. As most of us know today, when Europeans arrived in the land, also known as North America, indigenous peoples and ways of knowing were considered inferior and settlers thought we needed to be civilized through assimilation. In fact, John A. Macdonald, Canada's first prime minister said in 1885, that the great aim of our legislation has been to do away with the tribal system, assimilate Indian or indigenous people in all respects with the other inhabitants of the dominion as speedily as they are fit to change. And this was wrong. But now society has begun to recognize the importance of moving forward together in reconciliation. We are collectively understanding that all ways of knowing the world are equally, inval equally valuable and important. Change is happening. People are moving forward with weaving ways of knowing in the work that they do and in the natural sciences. And multiple ways of knowing there are. You see, worldviews and ways of knowing can differ among cultures, nations, communities, families, even individuals. With regard to Indigenous people, there are hundreds of distinct nations across this land, also known as Canada, each with their own unique cultures, traditions, ways of knowing. But among Indigenous philosophies and ways of understanding the world, there tend to be similarities in some aspects. For example, value, having values that prioritize relationships with the land. So bringing together or weaving multiple knowledge systems may provide holistic perspectives, allowing people to see what they might have missed with a single lens alone. Many frameworks have been described by various Indigenous peoples to embrace multiple perspectives and knowledge systems. For example, Adwoptimunk, or Two-Eyed Seeing. Adwoptimunk is Mi'kmaq and is a concept coined by Mi'kmaq elder Albert Marshall from Unamagi or Cape Breton. And Elder Albert Marshall has shared with us that we can better understand the world for the benefit of all by seeing through multiple lenses. For example, one with the strengths of Indigenous ways of knowing and another with the strengths of Western ways of knowing. And the idea is that because we're seeing the world in different ways, we're seeing different perspectives. We're seeing complementary views that together can combine and give us a more holistic view of the world. Many ecologists are embracing multiple ways of knowing in the work they do. 
And there are many examples that exist today. But one of my favorite I'll share with you here on beluga whales. This is an example that came from Henry Huntington quite a few decades ago, 1998, where he shared a story about research he was doing on beluga whales. He wanted to learn more about beluga whale ecology. And in that, he invited elders to share knowledge and insights. He talks about how one elder went off on sort of a tangent, talking about beavers. Beavers this and beavers that. And he said, I had to at least steer the conversation back to the ocean because as we know, beavers are a freshwater species where beluga whales are marine. So he tried doing so, but the elder stopped him and said, don't you see, as beaver numbers increase, they dam up more rivers, which affects fish because fish can no longer reach their spawning ground, which affects fish populations, which ultimately affects beluga whales because they depend on those fish. And he said, I never would have anticipated a connection between beaver and beluga. And that's one of the really interesting things about indigenous knowledge systems is that they're so very holistic, understanding things as being interconnected, in balance, very holistic. Whereas Western science, on the other hand, tends to view things in a more reductionist way, breaking things down into smaller parts, which is also important because people become experts in, in, in narrow fields. But you can see how having those different perspectives can be very complementary to one another and help us see a bigger picture as a whole, more interconnected. Now, Indigenous knowledge systems are often viewed as very important in contributing ecological knowledge as ecological or environment knowledge passed down through generations by Indigenous people, often by elders, individuals in communities who are highly respected and carry vast amounts of knowledge. But Indigenous knowledge systems are so much more. Indigenous knowledge systems are a way of life, holding original instructions, how to relate to the earth and all of creation. For example, recognizing the earth sometimes as our mother, who cares for us and provides all that we need. Recognizing that all life, plants, animals, they are our relations, our kin, and that we must always prioritize respect, responsibility, and reciprocity in all that we do. Now, despite the value of weaving knowledge systems, particularly in the science, understanding the value of this, we actually haven't done a very good job at being inclusive. According to Stats Canada, 4.9% of the human population in the land also known as Canada consists of people who self-identify as Indigenous. Yet, only 1.6% of people who are employed in the science and science technology fields self-identify as Indigenous. By being more inclusive, perhaps we can change that. And we are seeing more and more scholars over the last decade or more weaving knowledge systems in their work. This is a figure published by Stephen Alexander and his team showing the number of articles published in peer reviewed journals over time that have woven indigenous and Western knowledge systems just in coastal and marine monitoring management and research in the land also known as Canada. You can see over the last decade or more, the number of articles is increasing. So change is happening in a big way, but we still need to do better. Anishinaabe journalist and chairperson of the Canada Council of the Arts has said at a presentation I was lucky enough to attend, in thinking about inclusion and diversity, think of a forest. Is there one kind of tree? No, that tells us the natural way is diverse. So we need to do better because this is the natural way. By being inclusive in the work we do, in the natural sciences and beyond, we can see things we never saw before. We can understand things more holistically. And if we respect one another and work together, we can better address some of these major issues facing us all today. But we know that we have to proceed in a good way. When sharing insights about doing things in a good way, I often like to refer to a braid of sweetgrass. Sweetgrass is an important medicine to the Anishinaabe peoples. Robin Wall Kimmerer, Indigenous author and scholar, wrote the book Braiding Sweetgrass, where she uses sweetgrass as a metaphor in a different way. Now, this is one of my favorite books of all time. It is so incredible, and I highly recommend it. But I like to use the braid of sweetgrass here as sort of a different metaphor. 
in thinking about a good way. Think about a braid. Think that you have two strands, one perhaps representing Indigenous ways of knowing, the other representing Western ways of knowing, and imagine you braid that together, but then you let go. That braid will unravel with only two strands. You need that third strand. You need to include doing work in a good way. In the past, unfortunately, work hasn't been done in a good way, as people have extracted Indigenous knowledge, haven't engaged in meaningful collaborations. We need to do better. So what does a good way mean? That can mean many things, and it can depend on the nation. But for example, always prioritizing respect, responsibility, and reciprocity. So just like a diverse forest flourishes, so too does our work and our lives when we embrace diversity in the natural sciences and beyond. When science particularly is better, so is the environment and all our non-human relations therein. As people listen and learn, we are gifted with seeds of knowledge. So in thinking about environments that aren't diverse, perhaps like a pine tree plantation, we are planting seeds in those types of forests. We are changing monocultures into diverse environments. Embracing multiple ways of knowing not only supports reconciliation, but makes our work and our lives better. And this type of environment is one in which we all belong. So with this, I leave you with the gift of seeds and invite you to learn more and help our environment flourish because it is only together that we can plant enough seeds to transform the forest. Miigwech, thank you.